This is the F2 Nanticoke Yami Cross. And it's got serious diversity. The, the parent squash of this was a Bolivian squash that looked a lot like this. This was like, this was one of the parents. And then it was open pollinated. We got one fruit seven years ago. And then uh, when I planted the seeds from that one fruit last year, what we got were a whole bunch of squash that looked like this, a pink striped thing. And I recognize that that is a, like, there's no doubt that that came from a Nanticoke cross. So I figured save it and see what happens in the F2. The advantage of the Nanticoke is that it's a Maxima that is resistant to vine borer because it puts down big roots at every node. So the vine borer can't mess it up. Sometimes the vine borer makes it all the way to the fruit and like maybe gets a quarter inch into the fruit and then dies or it can't go any further because the fruit's too thick for it to bite through. So a Maxima for the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic where we have big problems with vine borer is the main goal of this breeding project. But I would like to stabilize something akin to that one or like look at this beauty here. Like a big beautiful pink striped squash. That's the goal. This is, this is the F3. The seeds in here are F3 seeds. So we'll see what happens with them. Let's unpack some of the vocabulary in that last clip, shall we? Nate was referring to filial generations, F1, F2, F3. This is the F2 Nanticoke Yami cross. Letter F for filial comes from the Latin filia, meaning daughter, and it's used by breeders to keep track of plant generations, specifically to keep track of hybrid generations where the parents come from different lineages, and so we can't always expect F1 to resemble the parents, nor can we expect F2 to resemble F1. Hybrid lineages don't breed true, in contrast to open pollinated lineages where we can usually expect the parents to resemble their children.